Marguerite. Marguerite, come on up and uh, tell us what's on your heart. Would you like to sit? Would you like to sit down, sweetie, and just hold the mic? Good evening, everyone. Good evening. It is a pleasure for me to be asked to speak about my oldest sister. Yeah. It's a sad occasion that she is not here to hear me talk about it. One thing I would like to say, we need to put the K back in her name. Her name Amen. Hazel K. Umbrista. Hazel K. Umbrista. And that came along for all of us because my daddy gave it to us. Amen. And I don't want you to think she got her political start in Broward County. She got her political start sitting on the front porch while my mama told us about politics, about segregation, about Jim Crow about not hating people, but working to better the world. I was so proud to have my mommy as a mother because what she did was, she not only took care of us after my father died, but for seven of us. She took the time to see that we didn't work in the dark in the cotton field took the time to see that we didn't iron white people clothes and take it and wash it. She took the time to show us that we could write insurance, we could sell grist papers, we could sell toilet articles. And then she also told us we could be ambassadors. How could we be ambassadors? By not hating anyone. Because she said, God is love. And that is what she instilled in us. To love everybody and give everybody a fair chance. And he used to learn that at the feet of my mom. And she carried it on with her. When we grew up, my mother was a nurse. My daddy was the town copper. So we had many interesting conversations about what life was about. When I was five years of age, I knew I must finish high school. And at that time, we would go to trade school because I wasn't going to Fam C. Hazel was the oldest, so she instilled in us that she was the oldest, we mind her, we did what she said, and we was all proud of her and her accomplishments. She took a different role from us. She wanted to make sure that all six of us had whatever it was that was good for children in those days. She went off and she would come back home to make sure that our clothes was intact, that our study was intact. And when we got books, the pages was tore out. Some of them was tore all over. But nevertheless, then my mom would take time to show us how to write, how to spell, how to count. Those things was important to us. And then as we grew and Hazel went on about her business, she went into the micro screen and she was very proud of that in later life. She would tell me about it and how the children was treated. How you would ride on the back of a truck, pick beans and tomatoes and whatever else they did. And it was interesting to me, but I know it wasn't a lie. If I would have survived, I would have died because I was lazy. I couldn't do that. She also came on and she got the Broward County. 
she came to Oakland Park. And when she got to Oakland Park, it was a very small little community, very community. <laughs> but she said, you know, we got to work to make things better. And that was her outlook for Broward County. And from that day till the day she died, I believe, my sister worked to make Florida, the United States, a better place. How did she do that? First, she didn't have a complete high school education. So she was the first person to go to Dillon High School at night to get her GED. After she got her GED, then she figured it out. I need to do more than this working and coming home. She went on to the University of South Florida and fast five. And where she became a teacher. While there, she has set up the choir, she has set up many different things. She has set up many political arenas there. And she came back to Broward County. Then she found out that the migrant children didn't have the same opportunity as the ones that went to Simon's Park at that time and at Cole. So they all put in together to see couldn't they get a school. And what they came up with was Markham, along with the Markham family. She worked very hard at that school. She taught out there for many years. And that did that. Then she got into the political arena. And she, we worked campaigns in order to get our feet in the door. We worked many judges, senators, representatives. We worked that campaign. And Hazel didn't hesitate. She was very outspoken. And by her being outspoken, they decided that they formed the EF with the NEA. In the NEA, they took on a political component. And then the Black Caucus came along. Then it was time for us to march on the beaches and on the different uh, restaurants and different places that were still segregated. Because remember, even though the people came over on this side of town to work, they had to be from over here by 5 o'clock. So they had to work and get over on the other side of Dixon before 5 o'clock. She worked to uh, ensure that when the taxes and the different one would come to pick them up, that they would be ready and they would not be, uh, you know, followed or harassed because we had a lot of that. Then she looked around and we were part of the final members of the Black Historical Society of Broward County where we found out that Black history was not being gathered properly. So Mary Smith and her Pepper, they got together with the Tallahassee, we got to Charlie and whatever. And we started the Black Historical Society. We divided up into groups. And we took the North group that was Hazel, Japanese, and Marguerite, we were sisters. And we began together the history. And as we did that, <coughs> she looked. And in Pompano, we couldn't find where blacks did anything but got on the bean truck at 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning and got on the bus and went up north and came back. And some of the families never got together because they left the children and never came back. Why, we don't know. That won't go hard there to start really working to make sure that all the history was gathered and gathered properly. And she started and she said, well, she said, let's look. And she looked around and we talked about the Schwann's airline. Then we talked about uh, Mr. Williams, who was a late Christian. We talked about Mr. 
Reverend McKenzie. And those are names that you don't hear because people don't really know about all of them. So she researched and she find out about Miss Ella. And it became her life work to ensure that her name was known throughout the city of Pompano and throughout all of history. When she did that, I had the members written down, but I don't have them with me, of who came with her. And they found it. Then I was coming over here to the Historical Society. I wasn't well received when I came. Sometimes they'll pass the paper, and when they get to me and I reach for it, they'll give the paper to somebody else behind me and say, oh, you, you need a paper? I said, sure, I need to read. I can't think of the man's name. He had white hair, and he had a white beard, and he shook real bad. Whatever his name was, he said, I believe she learned how to read. Say, so this, I'm going to give her my paper. I'm going to give her my paper. And from that, she saw, you know, they gave me the paper. Then Hazel and our father Macintosh came over here. And they joined the historic, this historic society. And that's where they went on and uh, uh, put in to make sure that all the history was gathered properly. Then Hayes became kind of commissioner on the historical preservation. And that afforded her to be able to reach all across the county and everywhere. Cap Lana, Danny, all out in Hollywood, just everywhere to wait that she went and started gathering history. I have a stack of old books I probably have to dedicate because my children won't throw them away when I die. That was from that era. And she looked, she said, Joe, yeah. she said, we don't even have a civic center in our area. That was the birth of these Pat Marshalls with Pat guiding all of us through this. And I can't remember who the little man was off of the beach and the lady used to smoke a pipe. They banked us wholeheartedly in getting the e Pat Lockers building. But nevertheless, when the building was finished, we discovered that so many feet had been taken off of the building that was on the blueprint. So she fought against that. Then she discovered the history behind Rock Road. And that was her whole thing, was to preserve Hammondville Road as Rock Road. And to make sure, she stood single handy. I can't find the picture. Besides Allied Building, when they had a record ball and they was getting ready to swing. And she still stood there. And I can't think of a man's name, but he told her, no, that's not what's going to happen. Y'all not going to tear that down. And then one little fellow who was over the CRA president at that time, he said, yeah, y'all tear it down. Y'all tear it down. She said, no. So because of that today, we have the beautiful ally purpose center that we have. And so I'm going to close because, you know, a preacher talks a long time. <laughs> uh, I want to say that because of my sister Hazel, not only did she do that, I want you history, brother. When you go over to Pompano Beach Cemetery, I want you to look on the west. That's what's close to Fair Highway to me. And I want you to turn in the first entrance you get to. I want you to go. And you're going to see two trees there. You're going to see a rock there. That rock was put there because we was walking through. 
and we were just talking about the Nassau's, the Bahamians, they, they're not Nassau, Bahamians, that was um, very not there because that was Black Cemetery. And about the quadrants and the different things they would find. Didn't know that this man was walking behind us. And he did a story in the Pelican about it. And they asked what would be wrong. So I said, why not y'all put a rock and put all the in members of something to the blacks that are over here? And that's what stands right there. But now they pretend they can't keep it beautified because sand washes on the rock. And if you want to eat the flowers, I'm going to stop that. But all of my nieces and nephews and cousins are here tonight. And this is Hazel's daughter, Lydia. Then we got Hannah Faith. We got Anita Hoover. Those were such children. But Hazel had many children. And I can call a lot of many names, but I just want to say thanks to everybody for coming out to honor my sister. 